When I look at all of mathematics, okay, when I look at all of mathematics, actually all of life, I use this monkey behind the mountain, the mining, sometimes the gung-ho method, every single day of my life. And I wanted to just show you guys this specific uh, um, question, which is analytical geometry, ladies and gentlemen. And what makes this one a little bit different from the other ones that you are used to is reading through the information. Because if you are not careful, you will not realize that you have to use paper one thinking in this question. Because the information says the straight line 2x plus 3y equal to 6 is reflected in the line y equal to x. So what is it? Say again? It's an inverse function. But sir, this is paper two. I know. Both the IEB and the GDE, or the DBE I mean, have come out and said there will be one question in your paper one where we're gonna ask you some paper two knowledge. There's gonna be one question in paper two where we're gonna ask you some paper one knowledge. So you can't just forget about paper one when you're writing paper two. I've seen them bring in sequences and series with trigonometry. Why not? If there's a common ratio, it's a geometric pattern. Even convergence. But let's not go there, I'm getting too excited about this. So the first question you can go and do yourself. Determine the values of M and C. It's a basic swapping of X and Y. The second question is where I want to get stuck at for a moment. Just for a moment. I'm not going to spend much time on analytical. If the inclination angle of Y equal MX plus C is this, please draw it in on your sketch. Where is your inclination angle? Please draw it in for me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't guess. Answer. Okay. Remember if we say this is of the line Y equal MX, what is the inclination? It's the angle between the positive x axis and the line. So where is this 123,69? Well, it's there. Okay, it's there by the black angle there. But now, sir, let me give you a nice little tip. Which lines does beta touch? It touches the y equal mx plus c and the other one as well, right? Okay, so here's the tip. The two lines that beta touch, you have to get the inclination angle. In any analytical geometry, listen grade 12s, you are going to need the inclination angle. So where is this other inclination angle? It is there. How am I going to get that inclination angle? Now look, monkey behind the mountains. I want to get beta. So I need the two inclination angles. The one inclination is given. So let me write this out. I want to write out my logical thinking. I want to get beta. So I have, let's say, alpha and theta. Okay? So alpha and theta. 
but for me to get theta, what do I need of that line? I need the gradient. The, oh, am I not given the gradient? No, you are not. No, you are not. You are not. You are given the line, but you don't have the gradient yet. It's not there yet. So what must I first of all do? I've got to get it in standard form. From standard form, in other words, isolate Y, I'm going to get M. From getting M, I'm going to get theta. So as I said to Ray when he approached me earlier, he said, sir, can I use this thinking everywhere? Yes. How do I do it in the exam? Squiggle on the side. Plot out. Man, take 20 seconds. Plot it out. I need this, so therefore I need this and this. But to get this, I need this. To get this, I need this. Oh, I've just got to walk backwards now. And you solve the problems. So in this case, I'm going to get 3y equal to negative 2x plus 6 over 3, over 3, over 3. Y is negative 2 over 3x plus 2. Am I worried about that plus 2? Nope. I just worry about the gradient. Okay? So I've got the gradient. Can I now get theta? From getting theta, can I get beta? Yes. Okay. Let me challenge you guys. What if I give you to calculate that angle there? Where are my inclination angles now? Yes, sir. From that point. Yes. Okay. I think you're going to pointing at the same thing. Always remember, you can draw your own horizontal line anywhere. So, in other words, you can go and say, "But I want to draw my horizontal line there." Let me do it in a bit space, spaced out there. There we go. As long as this is parallel to the x-axis, then where's my inclination angles? There and there. Okay? What if, and you see, I love to, I'd love to do my what ifs because I know I, I've asked this in, in, an, in an exam like this. What if I give you lines like that? And I ask you to calculate that angle there. Now where's my inclination angles? The one is easy. It's there at the bottom. I think all of you guys will get theta there, am I right? But where's the other one? Hmm? Okay, it's there. Okay, it is crazy, you're right. And it's crazy we expect you to know this. Please get this, ladies and gentlemen. You can draw in an a horizontal line anywhere and then you've got to use the inclination angles to solve it one last little bit of a challenge and I love this I love this one one of my favorites
what if I ask you for that angle there, alpha? Say again? Well, you can try and turn your picture around if you really feel like it. I personally am a bit averse towards um, turning my picture around. Can I not just draw my inclination angle there? And what other line does that angle touch? Well, the y-axis and the x-axis, so there's a 90. So in other words, in this case, alpha is theta plus 90. I am a horrible, horrible human being. Because I asked, I've asked all of these, ladies and gents, in the exams, and I've seen them ask it of students in exams. So when you get to inclination angles, I am pre-warning you. They're gonna turn it around, flip it upside down, sideways. You just draw your horizontal line. And no, if the angle touches a line, you need the gradient, you need the inclination. So even if, listen up, giving you some tips. Ladies and gentlemen, even if you can't finish off the sum, but you have this angle here, get the gradient and inclination of this line, gradient and inclination of this line, and you've scored four of the marks, even if you can't finish it off. Okay? Tips. Wish I had this when I was at school. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can go on for hours and hours and hours, but I want to get to my favorite section in the whole of mathematics. <laughs> Someone spotted that one coming a mile away. Trigonometry. I love my trigonometry. In here, ladies and gentlemen, I give you some of the most common mistakes that I don't want to see you ever make. The first one I wrote it up first because it's a mistake that my matrix do often. Expand cos 2x too quickly. What do I mean by that? I see something and I expand. I hope and pray for the best. The problem is, ladies and gents, if you remember, cos 2x have got three identities. If you don't know which one of the three you need to change it into, then you don't change it. You have to look at the rest of the sum and decide, I only need sine, I only need cos, I need both, and then make a decision. Another thing, ladies and gents, is that third, fourth point there, overcomplicating simplifications. And I want you guys to all put your pens down and look me in the eyes for, the, for hopefully not the last time today. Matriculants, if you want to get more than 50% for trigonometry, the first two steps are the most important one you can ever do. Getting your angles between naught and 360, getting your angles between naught and 90. So in other words, angles that are too big, subtract 360. Now I wanna know why can you do that? It's got bugger all to do with the revolution. It's got nothing to do with the revolution. Nothing. Yes. Oh, but that doesn't mean it's right. 
Okay, to make it easier. But why? Why can I add 360? Come on, Matrix. Have you, you've asked your teacher and you are very happy with revolutions, am I right? Uh huh. Yes, sir. It's the what? It's the period of the graphs. It repeats itself every 360 degrees. Therefore, I can subtract or add as many 360s because it is the period. So what about 10? Technically speaking, I could subtract 180. But, <laughs> please get this, the examiners are not thinking that way, so don't do it. Rather stay with, I can add and subtract as many 360s as I want to. Even with 10, it's just two periods, so that's okay. Then, getting your angles between 0 to 90, reduction formulas. Very, very, very important. So what I'm going to do is, I'm tired of talking. Not really, I'm never tired of talking. I want you to do this sum for me, please. Sine of 450 degrees minus x times by tan of x minus 180 times by 2 sine 23 cos 23 over cos 44 times by sine of negative x. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let me quickly have a look at this sum with you. I, I honestly so badly wish we had another four days working together. Would have been like really awesome. But unfortunately, you guys don't want to spend four more days with me. Just joking. What is my first two steps? Let's go through it step by step. Sine of 450 degrees minus x. Way too big. So what can I do? Minus 360. Okay? So I can minus 360. I can subtract 360 degrees. So this gives me sine of 90 minus x. Tan of x minus 180. That's negative. You all agree with me? So what can I do? Can I give you can I give you an easier one? Just add 360. Because then that changes into third quadrant. Okay? Not you have to, this is just a tip from a fool, yes. It must, but it's not. I gave it to you as x minus 180, no mistake. So that's why I add 360, because I don't want x minus 180. So if I add 360, I'm adding, I end up with tan of x plus 180. That is how I love to do it. I know some teachers take out a negative common, and then it kind of flips around, and then it adds too much effort. I'm too lazy for that. Okay? Then this whole back to sign... 2 sine 23 I'm going to leave as is for now because I'm not done with, with number 1 and 2. Step 1 and 2. So when I look at this, I now have cos 44. Now sine of a negative angle. A short little trick, instead of adding 360, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can see a negative angle as if it is in the fourth quadrant. Remember, you can see that, okay? So sine in the fourth quadrant is negative sine of x, okay? Because that is in the negative or in the fourth quadrant. Now, I love to kind of tell my students to see alarm bells going off. The moment I see sine of an angle, cos of an angle, I automatically think about the sine double angle rule. 
sine two times by some angle is two sine of that angle cos of that same angle. Everyone's all right with that? So in other words, I can actually change this one into sine two times 23 degrees, which is sine of 46. Okay, everyone's all right with that. Okay. Now, tan of x plus 180 is the third quadrant, so this is positive tan x. Sine of a 90, the moment I see sine of a 90, I know this changes into cos of x, and 90 minus is quadrant 1, so sine is positive there. Okay. All over... Now I'm going to teach you something and this is almost the last thing I want to teach you. I encourage you to really go and look at some of my other videos where we go into the deep, dark, wonderful depths of trigonometry because I can't do all that I would love to do with you guys here. But I want to show you guys a trick, a final last trick about mathematics that I love to think about. Whenever I see a weird angle, like in this case 44, I like to think, what angles can I work with? That's my thought process. First of all, I can work with 46. Why can I work with 46? Complementary angles, co-functions. What other angles can I work with? Someone said it here on my left. 2 times 22. What about 30 plus 14? Why would I want to use 30? Special angles. What about 45 minus 1? What about 60 minus 16? Those are all the basic options I have in basic maths that I can work with. Now I pick the one that works for me. Which one am I going to pick? I'm going to pick 46 because it's going to divide away. So cos 44 is sine of 46 degrees. So this is sine of x, which means, ta-da, those two divide away. I don't want to work with all three identities or functions, so I'm going to change tan x into sin x over cos x, which means cos and cos is going to divide away, sin and sin is going to divide away, leaving me with negative 1. Yeah? You are, but please, what she's asking is the following, and I've seen a lot of matriculants do this, is she's asking, can I not do instead of that, can I not write this as sin x over cos x? Am I right? That's what you're asking. What is the danger of doing that? What if there is a plus at the top? So, if, for instance, plus 2, then you can't do that. Oh. You can't do what you did here if there are multiple terms, top or bottom. You can do it in this case because it's all just single terms. But the moment there's multiple terms, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's why I don't like to do it. 
I'm rather more preference to not do it. Okay. Now, ladies and gents, we've got 10 minutes left. Time flies when you're throwing watches. Okay. Really bad dad joke for the day. Okay. When I look at this sum, I went through it with Alec there in the middle. And I'm not, I'm not going to go through it with you. I just want to ask you, into what am I going to change the cos 2x? Yes, you're right. It depends. Yes. No. So let me quickly help you. He said he's going to change it into cos squared x minus sin squared x. Let me give you a tip. Where is the cos 2x? In the denominator bottom or numerator top? It's at the top. Now look at where you want to go. Where do you want to go? You want to prove it equal to 1 plus? So do I want sins at the top? There you've got your answer. So into which one am I going to change cos 2x? I'm going to change it into 2 cos squared x minus 1 in brackets. And I only know how to do it because of where I want to go. So please get this. If you don't know where to go, you leave it as is. Let it come on with the whole time, down, 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 until you know, oh, I only want causes. Or, oh, I only want sins. Don't change it too quickly. My last tip for you for today is specifically got to do with a sum like this. Cos 29 degrees equal to 2K. And the question would be, right... sine of 1 degree in terms of K. That's your question. So what do I do? Say again? Okay. Wouldn't. Okay, I like, I, I love where your mind is going, Alec. You've got the right, the right idea. Let's look at the one degrees, because remember, that is your answer. That's the monkey. Now I've got to look at the mountains that I can possibly use to get that. What angles can I think of when looking at one? I can first of all think of 89 because 1 plus 89 is 90. I can think of 2 times by a half. It's not going to help me, but I can think about it. Next up, I can think of 30 minus... Say again. Oh, 30 minus... Twenty nine. So this means if I can, and I can, I can change this into sin, 30 minus 29, and then I expand. Sin cos, cos sin, 30 and 29, with the same sine 30 and 29. But now for me to actually answer this, I need to draw a triangle for 29 degrees. 
But ladies and gents, what I wanted to share with you is the secret of getting all the possibilities that you can possibly use and then picking the right one according to the scenario you are in. It's one of the biggest life skills you can ever, ever, ever learn. So ladies and gents, I'm going to give you two tips and I want you to close your books. To finish off this session, okay, yesterday I gave you the most valuable tip, start with theory, don't start at the question papers, Start at the theory you need for the question papers. But now, sir, once you start with the question papers, he has two bits of advice. I've used it throughout my studies, and it has brought success for me. In that 10 minutes, reading time. Not sleeping time, reading time. Okay? I analyze my question paper into three parts. Easy, I can do it with my eyes closed. Medium, I kind of know what's going on and what the hell. Some of you might enter another French word there, but I'm going with what the hell. Then you start with the easy questions. After you've done the easy questions, you go over to the medium questions. And then you leave the what the hell questions for right at the end. Why do I tell you to do this? Number one, it gives you confidence. Because if question one is difficult, sir, you start doubting everything. And it's not hard enough. I'm a failure. I'm not getting into university. And then what happens? Blank. See, if you've never studied, I've never seen this nonsense in my life. But it gives you confidence. Even if you start with question six. Let me quickly do question six. But please keep questions together. You can't go 6.1, 2.3, 6.4, 5.2, then they will deduct marks. But in your finals, as long as you keep a whole question together, they're not allowed to deduct marks. Even if you go question six, question eight, question one, question three, as long as you keep it together, nice big question one, they're not allowed to deduct marks. The other thing that it does is it prevents you from getting stuck in the middle of a question paper for 15 or 20 minutes on a three mark sum. And then the examiner goes, five minutes left. And you're like, I still have 15 marks to do. I know how to do it, but I don't have time. All of us have been through that. Yeah, worst feeling in the world. The last tip, if you want to have success, recreate exam environment when you study. Which means work against time, number one, when you study at home. So when you start working through question papers, you don't sit and mom brings in Samis and you get jamming and you're like on TikTok and Twitter and Instagram and I don't know what other social media sites. Don't listen, oh, you are still busy with the sum. You sit, put away the phone, put a timer there and work against time. If it's a three hour paper you are working out, you give yourself three hours on your bum from beginning to end, three hours, one go, and then you get and take a break. But so I can't do more 
children now. Well, good luck in the exam. Guys, if you are, whom, whom of you are athletes? Those of you that are athletes, what, what do you do? Swimming. So when you train, are you gonna swim like 10 meters, back 10 meters, get out, take a stretch break, you know, another f half a length of back? No, what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep going. If you've got 50 meters uh, fly or breaststroke or, you know, uh, freestyle, you swim that as fast as you can, right? Then why do you guys don't do practice maths like that? You guys think, oh, I'm going to write lies, sleep, big, no, and jam, and then when you get to examine, you're stressed. Now I'm going to succeed. No, it doesn't work that way. Any athlete will tell you. You've got to put yourself under that stress every practice session. Then start doing it when you do maths and science, when you start practicing. When I did my final year of um, my postgrad certificate in education, I used to write as fast as I can. Write my arms sore when I practice old papers. So that I knew by the time I walk into the exam, I'm used to it. I used to finish an hour before the exam because I actually knew everything, not because I knew nothing. <laughs> but that was because I practiced myself to write as fast as I can, so my body was used to it. Ladies and gents, you have this little bit left in your, in your schooling career, but it's this little bit that's going to determine the rest of your life. So take it seriously. You can draw again when you're done. You can go to parties again when you're done. It's just two months of your life. Give it everything you've got. Make sure that that engineering or doctor or vet or become accounting degree, you can walk into it by the time that you're done. Don't leave anything to chance.